So in the last week or two, Tyra Banks has been receiving a lot of backlash because an old video of Danielle Evans resurfaced. And let's talk about it. Danny Danielle Evans was um, originally from Little Rock, Arkansas, and she was the winner of Cycle 6 of America's Next Top Model. Not only was she from this small town, but she was a very country, and I'm from Texas, so I understand. And she also had this really wide gap, but it was really cute on her. So there was a clip in one of the episodes where she was supposed to get her gap closed and decided not to. So here's the clip. So Danielle, you went to the dentist, but you refused to have your gap closed. Do you really think you can have a CoverGirl contract with the gap in your mouth? Yeah, why not? This is all people see. It's easy to read, beautiful CoverGirl. It's not marketable. Yeah, just a little bit is okay, but I don't want to completely close it. Well, I guess she just left the gap wide open for <laughs> another girl, babe. So after about 15 years or so, because this season aired in 2003, this video has resurfaced and caused a lot of backlash from Ms. Tyra Banks. I wanted to put emphasis on Mrs. J's body reaction after Tyra did this notion, and I have some receipts later in the video about that. Slick Woods, who is a beautiful model now and is known for her notorious gap, did speak up. She took to Instagram and said, no one should ever talk to you like that at Denny Evans. That episode fucked up little Simone Slick, so that's how... Y'all feel, and she added Tyra Banks and Miss J. Alexander. Danny um, did respond to her and said that she was going to speak her truth, which she did. But I am going to pose a question before I get to what Danielle responded with. And my question is, has the standard of beauty kind of shifted from 15 years ago? So 15 years ago, that gap may have not been accepted, but now it is. Danny wrote, my truth, this video isn't made for unsolicited advice, words, or paragraphs on how you would have handled the situation. I'm speaking my truth. Aside from anyone's opinions, beliefs, or input, I chose to use my platform to speak so I have full control over my narrative. Watch until the very end to understand the purpose as to why I took time to even address the matter. Eugenia from Cycle 7 also commented, only we know, emphasizing that there is a problem behind the scenes. Guys, what's up? It's Danny here. Um, wow, what a crazy day yesterday with that video going viral. So this video is just to weigh in on everything. Um, I appreciate all of the news outlets that reached out to see if I wanted to comment. I honestly didn't feel it necessary until late last night when I received a message from Slick Woods. Shout out to you, Slick. Um, I knew in that moment after reading her words that I have a responsibility to address what really happened and to speak my truth. Um, but let me tell you what this video is not. This is not a video to war against anyone. This is not a video to defame anyone's character. And this is not a video to discuss my relationship with Tyra. This is a video for me to speak my truth and to provide clarity and for me to address an issue that was done 15 years ago that carries weight and that clearly affected a lot of young girls in America after watching it. Before I get into the ins and outs of that episode, I wanna take you guys back a little bit before we go forward so that everything makes sense and flows cohesively. I did top model listening to the wisdom of Elliot, my brother, Honestly, the greatest wisdom he could have ever given me, even though at the time I thought it was so dumb. Um, he knew I wanted to get out of Little Rock really badly. And he was like, yo, you should do top model just to get out. I was like, I would never in my life do that. It's fake modeling, they humiliate girls, terrible idea. He was like, yo, just do it to get out. It's a one-way ticket out to New York. Genius, bingo, we're doing top model. With that being said, I had one goal in mind. The one goal was to get out of my hometown to create a different better life for myself that was it i wasn't concerned about challenges i wasn't concerned about the things that would be set up in place to kind of deter me and to knock me off my game i was so focused i wasn't even hungry i was starved to get out you need to understand that starved so any and everything the opposition that came my way i was so deaf to it 
because I had a goal and anyone that stood in my way of getting out of Little Rock was gonna get bulldozed over, period. There were a few things that came up. Like the first one I think was my, my diction, my dialect, my accent, whatever you wanna label it. Um, when I'm filming and I'm in the middle of it, I had no idea that I sounded different than the rest of the girls. I'm like, all right, like, how do I fix it? You won't, you say I sound weird, how do I fix it? It wasn't until I got off of the show, went back home, and then I watched the show over and I was like, oh, it's just a matter of me enunciating my words. You know what I'm saying? Done, easy, fixed it, moving on to the next. Cut to that particular episode. Let's get into it about the gap. We were all going to the dentist as a whole. Me and Joni went first. We get to the dentist and the guy asked me, do you want to get anything done to your teeth? And I said, yeah, clean me up, whiten my teeth. He repeatedly asked me if I want to close my gap. No, I don't want to close my gap. Pushpin, none of this aired on TV. I'm giving you guys the behind, behind the scenes, right? He kept asking me if I wanted to close my gap. Nah, no, bruh super cool i'm super secure in my gap of course like any other kid i'd be lying to you if i said i grew up loving my long neck my jawbone and my gap i did not i hated it all i used to cry and ask my mother for braces we couldn't afford braces what did my mother say to me she reminded me that my two grandmothers who i absolutely adored had gaps they're queens you're just like your grandmothers you know what i learned to accept and love my gap so on top model when they wanted to close it i was like nah fam i'm good cut to we're now in elimination so i go forward tyra's like why didn't you get your gap clothes i'm like huh she's like i told you to get your gap clothes i'm like no you didn't she looks off camera right to production which none of you guys ever see i look off stage camera right to production kim mock gives me one of these in that moment i knew what was happening i knew that i was basically set up and not being told that Tyra wants me to get my gap closed so that it's good for TV, right? So in that moment, the 19, 20 year old Danielle stood there realizing that it was my one way to get out on this side or keeping my gap on this side and going back to Little Rock, Arkansas. What do you think I'm gonna choose, fam? So Tyra says to me, if I send you back to the dentist, will you get your gap closed? And I meet her with another question. So what you're saying to me is, if I tell you no, then you're gonna send me home tonight. Me and Tyra went and did that whole fiasco about two or three times, which you guys saw none of that on TV. What you saw is me coming up with the compromise saying that I'm okay with you closing it some of the way, but not all of the way. Let me explain something to you. The family that I come from, a family of hustlers, a family of go-getters, I was not going to allow something that is physical on my face to stop me from getting out to make a better life for myself. I had a laser focused goal. Nothing or no one was gonna stand in my way. And it wasn't about copping out. It was about understanding what really carries weight and holds value in my life. And teeth was not one of them. Um, I wasn't tight because of Tyra's comment about me not being able to model uh, with a gap. I wasn't tight about Miss J's comment about leaving the gap wide open for the next girl. All of that was trivial to me. I've heard it all before. What I was tight about is them trying to play me and making good for TV. However, the me now and reading the comments and understanding the weight that it created in other girls who saw that. This is why this post is being made because I want to address all of those young girls, because I've been using this time in quarantine to really go back and to love on and to nurture the little Danielle from childhood. So I'm gonna take this time to build up and to speak to all of my young queens that saw that episode that were truly affected by Tyra's words. I want you, I wanna speak to you right now. You're beautiful. And I'm not talking about a physical feature. It doesn't matter if you have a gap, stacked teeth, straight teeth, it matters not. It doesn't matter if you're black, brown, white and different other it doesn't matter what makes you beautiful is in here it's a matter of your self-worth high self-worth or low self-worth and no one can establish that except you so i'm speaking to all the little girls and if i could love on all of you right now i would i want to remind you of your worth your masterpiece you were so loved you were so adored and you're beautiful and it's not because someone higher up says that you're beautiful you're not a, you don't become a star because someone acknowledges your light. You are light. You are worth. You are valued. You are loved. 
Always stand in your truth and your power and don't let anyone ever tell you that you're not. If you have a goal, go for it. Bulldozer any and everybody out the way that's standing in opposition of you. I love you guys. Be well. Miss Banks took to social media and said, been seeing the post about the insensitivity of some of past ANTM moments, and I agree with you. Looking back, those were some really off choices. Appreciate your honest feedback, and I am sending so much love and virtual hugs. Comment down below if you think this is a justified statement from Tyra Banks and this is a true apology, or is she just tired of the backlash? I do feel like every so often people try to cancel Tyra, but she is a legend in her own right. And I did want to bring in Jay Manuel, which was the creative director for the girls, and also Miss Jay Alexander, who was the runway model coach for the show. Jay Manuel did make a post that says, Throwback Thursday, the ANTM winner who went on to slay despite her gap. I was honored to do her makeup for and produce her finale shoot in CoverGirl ad. And I'm blessed to still call her my friend today. Love you, Danny Evans. And of course, that made me want to go dig in some more. So I, of course, opened the comments and I'm going to get to that next. But I also went and found his YouTube page. Under that post, we have Nigel Barker, who is a judge or who was a judge on the show. He put the little fire like, okay, she fired. But a fan commented, did you ever feel like Tyra was problematic in the way she told Danielle that she wouldn't make it in the industry because of her gap? But praise to another girl a cycle later. I'm just wondering your honest opinion. Mr. J responded, great point. At Miss J, Alexander and I will address this tomorrow during our J's chat. So of course I had to go look for the J's chat. And I am going to insert that here because it seems as if there was some conflict, or not true conflict, but there were some disagreements on set. So many of you guys want to talk about the issue. Uh, the first question I have up, um, which really kind of addresses everything, really, it's from Zoe Yanni. Uh, and she asked, I would like to know with the recent resurfacing of the video of Tyra talking about Danny's gap. What was y'all's stance on the issue? People are really bashing her, and I wonder if you guys would think it was acceptable for her to try and somewhat force her to close the gap. So but, I'll preface, I'll, Miss Jay, I'll let you talk about this, but I'm just gonna preface it. We'll talk about this quickly, but Danny is cycle six. Let's stick to cycle four, because trust me, cycle four has got so much for us to unpack. But go ahead, Miss Jay, what, what do you want to say about Danny? We, I was gonna say, I saw a statement from Danny that was brilliant, and we could talk about that during cycle six. So, guys, yeah. save all those questions about, you know, gap gate. Save it all until then. I love it. Gap gate. Hash, hashtag gap gate. Put gap gate in your questions, and we will definitely mm -hmm. hit it up in two Fridays. Gap gate, Danny. But Danny did put up a, an amazing message. For those of you who want to hear her point of view, go to uh, it's Danny Evans one go to her page. I'm friends with Danny. I thought she did a beautiful job at a seven minute video and it was very powerful. Eloquent. And, and, and no makeup and she, and she looked good doing it. So she's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. So, um, okay. So that, that's really great. Um, the next question that I have here is from Tony, the pony. Um, Mr. J, Miss J, I have a question for Jay's chat. Generally, do you think Tyra implemented and endorsed toxic beauty, beauty stereotypes within the show? If so, do you think it uh, was to appease the reality aspects of having the competition show, or do you think uh, she should be held accountable for that? I'm well, I'm never been on the way it was written. I'm, uh, you know, um, is it Tony? Yeah, Tony. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tony, I'm, I'm not there for a production, so I don't know what those production meetings are, who comes up with the, with the creative. Remember, you know, me being a judge, not then, I was only aware of what was happening as I saw on television myself, because there's a lot of times I wasn't there. You know, Jeremy yeah. was there more than I did. And so, I think sometimes, you know, if one does something, they should be accountable for it. You know, I think yeah. that one should be. Um, toxic so, beauty, was based on 
Go ahead, DJ. Talk to me. It was based on what? You know, I think the, the issue that they're having is they're starting to feel like there was a double standard. Maybe may, from what I'm understanding, I could understand it wrong because there's so mm -hmm. many opinions out there uh, on the web. But it, it's kind of like Tyra's talking out of two sides of her mouth. One minute. She started the show with the intention truly to find the next top model. She wanted to give these girls challenges mm -hmm. um, that 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 accurately represented the fashion industry. So on the first side, I don't think, I think everyone's throwing Tyra under the bus unfairly. Tyra was trying to give the girls what it was going to be like in the industry. And y'all keep saying that the industry was like that or the show was like that 15 years ago. But what you guys keep forgetting is the fashion industry. Yes, it has taken small little steps forward, but yes. it's the same industry. And it, it's yes, not no. fair. It's not fair. They want a perfection that nobody has. That's number one. Number two, we talk about plus size models. Plus size models, yes, they're important. And I think it's amazing. But you might see one or one or two black girls on a runway. And Ashley Graham, I mean, she's breathtaking and stunning. But how many plus size models do we really keep putting out there? JD, do you have a exactly on that? Than, and, and I feel that my, and, and, and for me, I'm going to jump on that. If you're going to put out plus size models on the runway, it makes them in the show with the other girls that one would consider normal or thin, then put them out there. But I think mm -hmm. throwing one or two in there, eh, you're just doing that to, to appease what's happening, what people are saying. Right. If you're going to really go into it, go into it and do it right. Simple. And right now, the fashion is changing. What Tyra was doing back then was probably quiet. What most fans, what your fans don't know, is that there may be certain requirements of a casting director who's casting for beauty or a hair campaign. Did you know that most hair campaigns, the girls have to have their own hair and not weaves? Mm-hmm. True, true. So, so, so there's a lot of these things that the, the, the general audience doesn't know about fashion. And I think Tara was trying to push the envelope. I mean, she pushed the envelope, and you'll know that further down with, you know, with um, with our transsexual models, you know, with mm -hmm. our trans models, and with, mm -hmm. you know, plus size with Takara, you know. She wasn't just standing the size of the boobs. And I, I, once we said back then, she wasn't set up for failure. Tara was pushing the envelope is what she was doing. Absolutely. And so it got to yeah, the and, edge and went over the top, but in the end, she was pushing envelope trying to get it out there. Yeah, and I think I really do think Tyra is being thrown under the bus uh, unfairly. But I'm going to be—I'll I'll be honestly. People are throwing her under the bus, um, but I think at the same time, like I can't defend her. I can't get inside her head of what she meant with certain things. This cycle, right. a lot of very controversial things happened, and I'm just going to stipulate this, guys. Um, everyone keeps asking, well, who allowed that? Oh, but the Jays stood by and let this happen and this and this and this and that. Okay, let's be real. It was Tyra, as she always says in the press, it was her show. It was her show. She was the host. Let's be clear. Number one, anything that happened on that show is sanctioned by or was something was creative that Tyra put forward. Now, where I worked with Tyra in the previous cycles, cycles one, two, and three, you know, we'd sit on the phone and talk about photo shoot creative and blah, blah, blah. Cycle four, and I think why I'm feeling stressed even talking about cycle four, was the first cycle because the show was so huge at the time. You know, we just came off the whole Eva win, who nobody knew. Now, all of a sudden, the other exec, and there were a couple of co-EPs and other executive producers, but the other main executive producer, you all know him, Ken Mock. Ken and Tyra started doing... The huddles, Jay, I, I, we got to speak the truth. They did the huddles, yeah. and then it was about creative being dictated down. We also had more sponsors. I noticed some of you asked questions about there were a lot of sponsors this season. There were. So my job now became, how do I make it look like fashion? How do I appease the sponsor, whether it be like Luberderm, like we did with the, with the alligator show right. we're going to talk about? Um, then what Ken wanted, who knew and still doesn't know anything about fashion. You say the house of Masoni, he turned to me and said, what's Masoni? So he knows nothing about fashion, and then you got Tyra's wand. So you have all this, I had to create a show. But when, what, when, but, what? but when people come to me and say, well, you stood there for the, a lot of this creative. No, I was hired to do a job, and I had bosses who told me, this is the creative you have to create around. Execute it. Execute it. Execute. Execute, yes. Execute it. Tyra also had bosses, by the way. Network. She did. She did. Tyra had bosses to network. So you don't know what the network is feeding for their ratings, what they're feeding her, which just to feed producers. Remember, and you can say, Jay, I was never part of the never part of the huddle. Because I was never part of the creativity. 
as far as I'm concerned, I was. So this is just part one. I just really want to address this Danny Evans gap situation. But it also stared up in me. I wanted to address a few other things that Tyra Banks has done on this show that could be considered controversial. So I'm going to come back with the part two to this video where we talk about Tiffany, who was the infamous, we were all rooting for you. I want to talk about the blackface photo shoot. I'm going to talk about Yaya and them telling her that she was trying too hard to prove that she was black. I want to talk about pretty much a lot of these photo shoots. So make sure you stick around, you like, you comment, you hit that bell button so you know when part two comes. Because we got a lot of things to discuss, baby. Baby Tyra. Mm.